All right, folks, welcome back to the Dota Pit League. Season number two group stages. Denial Esports going up against my insanity. Thank you so much for joining us here on twitch.tv slash Dota Pit. Of course, um, I had a bit of a break yesterday, as did F4L from Dota Pit. I had Greg and, of course, Blaze step in and take those two series off our backs. And we found out a little bit more about what was going to happen with Group A. And, of course, for those of you that didn't see, 4ESC really needed to win pretty much every single game to get into the playoffs in Group A. Unfortunately, they dropped a game yesterday up against what was, I believe, M5, and their playoff run ends there. So with that, our top four teams will be, I believe, Virtus Pro, Evil Geniuses, Tinker, and Complexity in Group A. Group B, well, it's a bit more still undecided as we are uh, looking at a match that could potentially decide the outcome or at least uh, get us closer to that. So Denial versus My Insanity, two teams going at it, of course, my name is Mott. With me is, of course, our stats have been Mott Pax. And after this long-winded introduction, I will finally give the mic over to F4L. How the hell are you, man? I'm doing good. What an introduction. That was quite the intro. Yeah. You know, listen, I just wanted to talk for a while. It was okay. I, I had all yeah, this good little energy. monologue. Yeah, it was good. I'm yes. happy now. All right, if we look and get into this game, we're going to have Denial going up against My Insanity. I'm pretty excited for this match. I think, you know, we've seen a lot of good performances from My Insanity. We actually haven't seen very many games from Denial, I don't think. How a lot of their games, games they came played? early. They, they played the games earlier on, I think, at the season. I think they oh, okay. played eight games total, but a oh, lot of them eight. were earlier. What's their uh, record right now? I believe it's four and four. I will look four that up four? for you as I actually have the Illiquipedia page open. Uh, right. Yeah, they're four and four currently, so they're, they're in the they're down tied for sixth essentially with Virtus Pro Polar. But the thing is, with the exception of Sneaky Nick's Assassins, who are currently two and eight, I think this group is actually wide open. I mean, even Hellraiser's is six and eight. Um, but important to note, Hellraiser's and Empire are both six and eight. They've already played all of their games. Uh, everyone else has yet to play their games here in, in Group B. So it's anyone's think, game. I think Denial are favorites in the series. They showed some pretty good games against Xenon, even though they weren't able to win either of those games. One of them was really close, and it went to the super late game with some weird Gyro versus Phantom Assassin game. Where we actually saw Eternal Envy going six slotted with no boots. <laughs> what a guy. Yeah, what a guy indeed. <laughs> but if we go into this particular draft, we have some interesting heroes actually. You know, Denial picking up the Razor and the Doom. You know, heroes Ten commonly seen in the previous patch, but not so much anymore. This is, uh, I like the throwback. Again, we talked a lot about Doom, um, you and I, when we see this hero. It's just a hero that he deserves to be picked more. And I think teams are like, hey, this guy still has an R button. We should probably pick him. Mm -hmm. As far as Razor is concerned, yeah, he's still pretty good. I think the introduction of Crimson Guard is a bit interesting in how it works against Razor, and I think that the changes were decent enough where I don't think the hero is as imbalanced as it once was. Mm -hmm. Still a strong hero, though. Still pretty good. Hey, yeah, I mean, it is Radiant important to note you have to have a hero that can actually go that item. True. Currently, my insanity not with a Crimson Guard carrier, so... You know, it does make... I mean, Razor actually gets affected very hard by the Crimson Guard if you are able to build that up, so... It is definitely important to note. And my insanity, going to go with the Lich Morphling combination. We'll most likely see that on the mid lane, I would think. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get themselves that the steady two heroes and the Jukiro and Ogre, which have just become so popular. Yeah, this is uh, a really good dual combo. I guess even though Jukiro will probably be played as a core and then Lich is going to yeah. be supporting the Morphling in the mid lane, you could still argue that these two heroes would have the burst damage of gods. Um... MYI, they, they actually got their Legion Commander banned out third phase. I like to make a note of, of Grazine and his Legion Commander, although it's not like the most amazing thing I've seen in the world. Whenever you have the opportunity to see Legion Commander for MYI, they're, they're generally going to pick it because that hero just seems to work well with them, even if she doesn't get the most farm in the world. Yeah, they also actually denial first phase ban brew, or Brood, not Brew. So, Big quirky. It, I don't actually have... Has Brood or Phoenix remaining. been picked at all in any competitive games? Uh, Phoenix has been picked, I believe, for Tinker. I, at least for Tinker. I'm pretty sure Radiant that it might have been picked by more teams. But I know Sing Sing has played in the offlane. Uh, okay. But as far as Broodmother is concerned, I don't know. That's a stat that I do not have on yeah. a hand. 
it's very interesting to me that it would get first phase banned. I think the hero has a lot of potential of being as a fifth pick. Right. But I think if you pick it first, you're just asking to get countered. <laughs> hey, let me buy these century wards real quick. Oh, actually, we could just buy, like get heroes that destroy this. Oh, I think it's just the hero thing. Like, yeah. sentries actually yeah. don't... No, I know. Sure, sentries are effective Five against group, but there's a lot of counter. Like, no, the I Legion know. Commander especially... It's just not a hero you That's true. Against. Overwhelming odds, yeah, that'll just wreck a Broodmother. And, uh, and the spiders give so much gold now. They do. It's the, like uh, the last change. Is it like like anywhere from the teens to 20s, I think, in terms of how much gold they give? They actually give almost as much as a melee creep. It's pretty insane. It's kind of absurd. If you have like, you know, 20 or so spiderlings, which I guess is kind of a lot, but still give away a lot of gold to somebody that has <laughs> You can good actually way just clear. feed like two kills worth of gold in one nuke. <laughs> It's like, oh, I guess we picked this hero that's kind of okay at pushing down towers if they don't have wave clear. Uh, which, by the way, a lot of heroes have that. So, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. The first, the first phase ban is kind of questionable to me. But again, it's uh, maybe it's the whole Zen of the strategy. Yeah. Maybe we ban out of here that it wouldn't really give see, I really want to see Brood getting picked though. I think. The oh, me hero, too. Like, is a is a fifth pick can actually be really interesting. Oh yeah, I mean, I think the hero has a lot of. Uh, it's got a lot of upside. It just, people need to experiment with it, obviously, like they do with every hero. Uh, but, yeah, I think Phoenix uh, is going to be picked a lot, but Broodmother as well should be pretty interesting. But the last picks coming out, the Crystal Maiden and the Faceless Void. So see him now seeing some play as well. Um, and then Faceless Void, pretty standard. It'll probably be the offlane Faceless Void for Mitch. And Mitch has been a player that I've really enjoyed watching, honestly. His Darkshire, I think, has been his most mm -hmm. prominent hero, but I think he should have a, a good Void as well. Oh, you know what's interesting about Phoenix? Oh, what's that? I played a pub yesterday, or mm. this morning, I guess, where I was faceless void, and the enemy had a doom with an agonims, and I was always getting doomed in the fights, so my Phoenix actually bought a agonims, Ten seconds, really. and you know when you go in the egg, you can take someone with you? That's right. So after Five I get doomed, he would just remaining. egg, and then he would take me inside with him. And then the ags like disjoints or something, and then I come out with full health. It's actually pretty crazy. <laughs> Would you just like, like all chat the doom like, or something? I was like, this is like the counter to doom. It's we the next finally level. Finally figured it out. The sun counters <laughs> it, doom. It took us hundreds of patches, but we finally got it. And it only takes what a forty-two hundred gold item to do so as well. But that's all right. And also, yeah, you have to have a phoenix in your Lincoln's. game. Yeah, that's true. It's probably more effective as well because you can take multiple heroes it's not just the one hero it's can like a snowball i'm pretty sure you can i think it works I like it snowball was just one because they come back with full life and mana no no no. i think i think ags let you all right listen we're gonna we're gonna look this up here real quick because we gotta pause we're gonna nice. go to dota wiki and check this out but i actually think it's one of the coolest ags in the game no it's actually I, I sick it's good like and what was funny is that's the first that was the first time i'd ever seen it <laughs> Four easy payments of ten fifty gold, everybody. That's that's how you counter the Doombringer. That's how you do it. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me read this. The Agnum Scepter upgrade turns the spell into a single target spell with five hundred cast range. I guess. Yep. I guess it's just one. Yeah, it's one then. So you click it on your ally, I guess, or you <laughs> can. Just why would you just pick Tuscar, man? <laughs> like, here's better. No, 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 because it. It, it makes you come out with full life and well, mana. Doesn't Tuscar do the same thing? All right, never mind. I'm not gonna get it. I, I you. Hmm. No, no, no. Okay, if I'm doomed, right? Yes. And I go into the thing. Let's say I'm doomed and I have a hundred life left. Mm -hmm. I go into this sun. When it explodes, oh, I get full, full life. life, right? Full, okay. Like hundred okay. percent. Right, 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 right. I guess that that yeah, that is the upside. Yeah. That is the upside. Okay. And against Doom, that's actually really strong because it basically just makes the spell kind of useless. That's true because if you come out of a snowball and you still have the same life and same health, you're still just gonna get right click yeah. down or something. So, all right, that's fair. I don't know why it took me so long to understand that, but that that's okay. It, at least it gave us some banter for this pause, which has seemingly vanished uh, in the matter of seconds. So, I'm excited. This should be a good series. Again, it's the only two games we have today, but don't worry. Fret not, because tomorrow and the day after, for those there's of you like wondering, there's like two and three games. There's like three and four games, dude. The, Wait, three and four? Actually, they did. They rescheduled the Virtus Pro I versus thought, Team Tinker game, okay. so it's two All games right. tomorrow. So you were correct on that, and then four on the twenty fifth. Four. M wow. M five versus Alliance starts at fifteen hundred CET, which is roughly let's oh, that's see, very early. it's like eight or nine my time. It'll be like six your time or something. 
this. I, I don't know. But and then after that we have EG versus Virtus Pro, MYI versus Virtus Pro Polar, and then C9 versus Virtus Pro Polar. So That's we'll be okay. going from roughly eight AM my time to about five to six PM my time. So we got a lot nice. of casting on uh what is that? Tuesday, I believe. Yeah, Tuesday. So I mean I'm sure if I can cast I League at two in the morning. I can cast at six in the morning. I, mean, I don't even understand why I League has to have their. They have actually the qualifier for every region at the exact same time. <laughs> Wait, they're really? Just like they're just like these are the times, and they're the same for every region. Have I think fun. I think that's I think that's an ace thing. I'm not gonna. And it actually just messes up Ameri like every other region. So it's wait, not so terrible. you're telling me that it's like uh, Americans at like 3 a.m. in the? No, it's 5 a.m. Eastern. Why? 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 Yeah, 5 a.m. That's actually the absolute worst time for people that play video games, <laughs> because. It's too late to just stay up and play it. Yeah. But it's and it's too early it's to just event. wake up. You know, if it yeah. was like at nine in the morning, I could kind of see it. You yeah, it'd be fine. Nine a.m. is perfect. You, yeah, time. nine a.m. probably pe you can get people to wake up at five. It's, it's not assuming uh, that people don't have to go to school or have work or obviously they don't work. They this is their job, but some people do have to go to school, especially people that are applying for North American qualifiers. But regardless, this is a whole other issue that we're talking about that we don't need to get into. Scheduling is something that I'm sure people like Charlie could go on forever. Charlie and Greg would just get so upset about it, but not us. We're here to watch yeah, Dota. A lot of salt would be had. You yeah. Just watch your blood pressures when you listen to those conversations. Seriously. Well, regardless, we're here with Dota Pit, a well-run, so far, well-played tournament, I gotta say. It's been quite good. Um... Oh, come on. God damn it. Ugh. All right. What? I was so ready to get into the game, and we paused real quick. I don't know what happened, but oh. I don't know what the they've line. been arguing about. But... <sighs> I don't know what's happening. Regardless, again, thanks for joining French us here. French DDoS, apparently. Yeah. having a little bit of issues, I guess. Yes. Okay. Well, nothing you could do about that, I suppose. Um... You know, not actually upset about the pauses. It happens from time to time. So, I just hope that it doesn't happen during the game. Because yes, uh, two days ago when I was casting with Dakota, yes, we had it was a two game, two games, and it was for Starlighter. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, there was more pauses than game time. <laughs> it was actually the most frustrating thing ever. Because I think the like. I mean, it is sort of taboo to say this, but I think the DDoS is kind of back. I don't know. Because there's been actually a lot of it recently, at least in games that I've seen. This is uh, also it's after cool. the update that Valve yeah. released, so just something to keep in mind. I know they're working at it, and they're working tirelessly, but... Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's a Valve thing or if it's a I players it's... getting... I, I don't know. It might be a bit of both. But but... There's been a lot of a lot of pausing recently. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just inevitable in video gaming and, and especially in Dota, but we will get back into the game. I got to tell you, you should ask Greg about uh, the two-hour pause story that him and I have shared once. Um, so any other pause that you might think is bad, just uh, go ahead and ask Greg about the two-hour pause story. I'm sure he'll he'll relive it with, <coughs> with great I will detail. Ask him. Yeah. So, Denial versus MYI. It looks like we are finally underway here. Uh, for both squads, it should be pretty interesting going into the game. Uh, this is a big match. MY sitting at, I believe, 6-4. and four. Denial is 4-4, four and four, so a win here for Denial would be huge. For MYI, it almost, I wouldn't say cements them in the playoff spot, but it, it gets them pretty close in the running. So for, for Denial, your mostly French squad, if not all French, will have Paris or Sakshika playing your Razor. Uh, we're going to have Mad playing your Crystal Maiden, the support in the top lane. Jarrell is going to be on your mid lane puck. Down bottom, we will have Funzi playing your Doom. And of course, to help him out for the time being, it's going to be Creo on your Vengeful Spirit. That is Denial on your dire side. And for my insanity on the Radiant, in the bottom lane, we're going to have Jakiro being played by Grazine, supported by Bucktop. Did he change his name? No, I don't they, remember. They have six. Uh, they have six players. Oh, they have six players. Okay. I forget who the the other player for them is, but Bucktop has not been oh. playing for them recently. So, 
And then uh, in the mid lane, we're going to have Milan playing the Morphling, being supported by Lizard on this Lich. And in the off lane, we're going to have Mitch playing the Faceless Void. Yep. So I talked up Mitch's off lane performance quite well, and, and, and hopefully he shows up a good performance again. It's going to be yeah. a solo versus solo. It's not the easiest matchup because it's a Razor. He's just going to win his lane outright, but they do have a dual lane mate, so that's the trade off. I remember he played a Dark Seer, I think, yes. and he was really impressive on that. Yes. Like, that was one of the best offlane performances I've seen in a while. Yeah, he was he was actually getting kills. He was being involved early on rather than just sitting back and farming. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's not going to be the easiest matchup, but if anyone can maybe do well, it might be him in this lane. However, Saksha is already stealing a lot of damage. 34, 42, already gone. So, uh, currently in the jungle is Matt. He's just going to be jungling up, clearing, and using his Frostbite to get to level 2 and 3. Down bottom, uh, dual lane coming out. So Grazine, he does have liquid fire, and he does have really high strength gain at, for an int hero. Something to keep in mind on the Jakiro. <laughs> yeah, both Jakiro and Ogre are actually such tanky heroes, tanky spellcasters. And I think that's why they became so popular. Actually, just tanky heroes in general have become really popular right now. And it does look like Denial are going to just do dual lane setup to try to fight the dual lanes of MYI. Not choosing to put one in the mid lane, but rather in the top lane to fight against this Void, who's really just not going to have a good time against the Razor and see him. It's, it's pretty difficult. I mean, even if you could time walk away, does, he will not be getting CS. He'll try yeah. his best, but he only has one to his name right now, and the Razor has seven, so... Just gives an indication of how this lane can go um, later on down the line. In the mid lane, though, I mean, you do have at least the Morphling getting some decent CS. Milan has actually played Morphling more than once in Dota Pit, and he's played it rather well. He's sitting at 7 CS right now. Jeral is sitting at 7 as well, so something also to keep in mind. And this is with Sacrifice being used on a cooldown by Lazard. And they're going to counter ward as well on the high ground. So they threw out that sentry early, interestingly enough. They knew that ward was there somehow. Yeah, they just, they actually couldn't kill, they had vision from the high ground, but they couldn't kill it yet because of where the creeps were. So finally going to be able to get that nice 50 golds. Honestly, it's actually kind of a weird placement for an ops in the mid lane anyways. Yeah, it was right in the middle on that hill on the high ground. Mad's getting mad. I had to make He is one. definitely fucking mad. <laughs> He's, he really is. I just... It's a bit unfortunate, but pauses happen in the Dota game. We'll have, hopefully get back underway in just a second. So our first game has been, I guess, seven to eight minutes of pause, two minutes of actual gameplay. G is called. It looks like go, we're getting go, underway. Go, go, go. Go, gadget, Dota game. <laughs> we're going to be back underway. Denial down in the bottom lane. And seven last hits coming out for the Doom. Not too bad. The double ringer protection pro, uh, stat, uh, rather build. I actually did this in the game earlier. I don't remember what hero I was playing, but I was in the off lane, and it seemed like a good idea at the time. He's going to get dual breath, though, and he's going to take some liquid fire damage as well. He does have score strength, so he should be okay. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, he just took a licking, and he's going to be back in the lane, though. Yeah, Funzy right. definitely not going to be having fun against that lane, so both of these off laners really struggling in their perspective lanes, although Doom does have nice CS for now, but I think he's... It's slowly going to get to a point where he actually just can't lane against this THD because Liquid Fire is going to do too much damage. And being a spell that costs no mana is quite nice. Is it the only one in the game? For uh, Liquid Fire? Yeah, like a damaging spell that doesn't cost any mana. Uh, I feel like it is. Probably, I guess. I always thought of it as a Well, there's like Phase modifier. Shift. Yeah, Phase Shift is another spell that... It I, I mean, come on, it's a spell. Him. Look at how much damage it does. It, it level 4, it does 30 damage for 5 seconds. That's it's pretty true. insane. Well, I guess you're right. Scores just pop for Funzie. They're going to try to chase after Grazine, but first blood's going to go in the mid lane as there is a gank rotating in from Mad. I'm missing clearly. Jeral gets the kill with those you are been waiting Rift, and uh, the Lich goes down, so... Rip him. Really nice rotation from fucking Mad. And when you're against this Lich dual lane in the middle, I think one of the most important things that you can do is to gank the Lich because Lich is a very vulnerable hero, doesn't actually have any escape mechanisms, no stuns, so really nice pickup. And Denial actually getting a lot more from this mid lane than I expected. CS is actually very even between these two heroes, even with the Denies coming out, so. I mean, when you're, doing when you're running this dual job. lane mid, you, you really need to be shutting down this 
this yeah. uh, this puck a lot, and they're just not doing that. Sashka on the top lane, Static Link is going to go, and he'll just steal and continue to steal damage. So it almost feels like every lane is sort of going in denial's way, especially after that first blood. And if they can get a kill top somehow, or even bottom, they'll be in a good position. Uh, Venge yeah, has rotated top, and they're looking to make a go, it looks like. The only lane not going for them is that bottom lane. They know where Mitch is. They're going to pop the Magic Missile. They'll probably use the Frostbite in just a moment as well. He's going to try to get down to the low grade, and will do so. Mad doesn't decide to use that Frostbite after all. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have really done anything. Bottom lane, dual breath, gonna go in liquid fire. They know that the hero has rotated out, and Funzi is alone. Scorched Earth, the right click, the ignite coming through. Liquid fire is up in a second. Will fire. he go down? He's taking a lot of damage. That Scorched Earth is keeping him up and strong, but there's the fire blast coming in. They are diving. They will get the kill. Bucktop is gonna back away. There's the Dream Cola coming in. Olan Grazi, the illusory arm, is gonna come through the right click from Jarl. They get the return kill. And Jarl is pretty happy with that. They might get Bucktop, like you mentioned, but no, it looks like Jarl is gonna back away, and Bucktop might get away scot free as he TPs out, so. Uh, top lane, Mitch is going to get static linked. He already has no mana for time walk. They need one more right click in the plasma field. And Paris doesn't even need that Q button. He just whips him into shape. Gets the kill. And so basically I would like, if we were doing a comparison of how these lanes are going. So there was a dual lane versus dual lane at the bot in the bottom lane. Obviously going in a bit of a favor for MYI. But if we compare the two 2v1 lanes... In the mid lane, you have Morphling with 27 CS, you have Puck with 22, so not too big of a difference there, but in the top lane, when you have 26 CS on this Razor and only 8 on the attack. Void, that's a huge difference, and that's really what you would have liked to see if you were MYI in the mid lane on the Puck. This is, um, honestly, really, it's a good start for Denial. Can they keep it going? Can they shut down Milan and, you know in a decent enough position. And on top of that, I think the Chikura as well is going to be an important factor to deal with. So mm -hmm. they've killed him once. He dove the tower, though, and he got a kill before he did go down. So something to keep in mind. Yeah, and I mean, if we start talking about, you know, which heroes scale better, I would say MYI scale a bit better just because the only hero on their team that doesn't really scale that well is Lich, but he provides a nice ice armor for his team, so... I think in terms of scaling, MYI do come out a little bit ahead, but in this mid-game, I definitely think Denial will have a huge advantage with the Doom, the Razor, the Puck. They just have a lot of stuns and damage in the early game. Yeah, honestly, if, if Mitch had gotten something in that south lane, it might be different, but they're going to make it go on Funzy Bottom. This not might not be the best idea. He's trying to get his Doom off, but he will do so. Lazard is going to fall first and foremost. Funzy's getting right-clicked down. There's the Frostbite coming in. Creo has magic himself through it. He decides not to use it. They want to get out one for nothing. This is a smart trade. They didn't need to go any further and force rotations and die. I like the choice from Denial. Yeah, really punishing this Lich pick. I think the best way to punish Lich is just kill him over and over. Because, it, like I said, it's a hero with no mobility spells, no stuns or disables for himself. So it's actually really easy to get a lot of kills on this hero. And if you don't punish him, he's actually just going to walk around, deny waves around, pick up experience. And there's times I've in professional games even where I've seen Liches just walking around at the same level as solo heroes. So at least in the early game. Well, they've made him a non-factor for the most part. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't really provided that much. He's sitting at, what, level 5? So he is doing okay, but again, Sacrifice is going to provide a lot of experience regardless. Uh, but bottom lane's getting pressured. Grazine continues to pop the liquid fire on the tower, but they don't seem to really mind. Funzi's sitting here. He's got Doom up at 37 seconds, but he's just going to try to get CS as this is all happening. Top lane, they're just trying to get Mitch some farm here. I mean, his CS is standing at 8 now, and Paris is 47, who's, by the way, going for a mech. He already has his treads up. Um, and he's actually going to have that fly out to him right now. That's a full mech mm. done in eight and a half minutes, so. It's kind of interesting that we see him going for a mech. I guess it's a little more reasonable and understandable because he has the Crystal Maiden on his team. And actually, the Crystal Maiden bug is back. Oh, God, what do you... <laughs> I, is it, do you not see her hair? Is she bald or something? I don't see it. No, 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 no. I see her midsection. Oh, I do not see that at you all. You don't? No, I kind of wish. It, yeah, that's a great. That was a great bug. I. It's a great bug. We don't it's, see enough crystal mana. It's really amusing. Yeah, for those of you that weren't aware, we saw this at first in Dota Pit. Uh, it was pretty it much just, just her, her chest. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. her cleavage. That, that's all it really was. They didn't show her face. That was the portrait, by the that's way. That's what I see right uh, now. <laughs> 
it's unfortunate that not everyone can witness the glory that is the but anyways range, but. what i was talking about was it's a bit more understandable to have this mech on the razor because right. it's going to have that nice mana region the from Arcanor. the cm yeah. usually you don't want to go for it usually most people actually just forego the mech on razor completely now because you don't really have the mana to support the new <clears throat> mana cost from mech so i think it's understandable this game with the cm no, it definitely makes sense. I think that you, you can get away with some greedier choices. Not necessarily greedier, but more mana-intensive choices because of the Arcane Aura. But she chose to get two points into it rather than get the, you know, uh, max points on Arcane Aura. She went for Crystal Nova instead. Uh, Denali going to try to roam in gank, but they were spotted out clearly by this bottom rune. Or rather, bottom uh, ward. Mitch is going to take a lot of damage top, and of course, those will come in to help out as well, but it's a bit too late for that, mm -hmm. so... I actually like the 414 build that I think um, Asai did it on EG. It's actually quite strong, I think, because, you know, Frostbite's really not that great as a skill. You know, it's really good for clearing the jungle, but outside of that, not so great. Dyer's bottom tower and is under attack. your third skill is really what makes the hero, like, a viable pick. Arcanor is actually just so underrated, I think, a lot of the times. Bucktop is going to get spotted out by Funzie. He's going to run right oh, into he both heroes. Doomed? I think he's going to get doomed. There's the doom. There's the magic miss. So Bucktop's going to get Scorched Earth right click down as well. And Ogre uh, should end up dying here. And the right click from Funzie will secure the kill. Waveform in. They want to try to fight this. Mitch comes in. He has the Cronus for magic missile. I think Creo's going to die regardless. He's just trying to make sure that his doom gets out. Ice Path's going to go and Creo's in some trouble. Uh, he's trying to juke and jab as best as possible. Space created, Milan comes through in the wave form. Meanwhile, mid lane, Gerald gets a kill solo onto the Lich. They are really punishing Lazard in this game. He has, what, three deaths? Yeah. So. And I mean, if we look at his items, he's got Ob's Wards and TP Scroll. So it doesn't even have boots. And it's one of those games where I feel like you really need to let this Lich hero buy early boots and even maybe Tranquils. I actually would have liked to see Ogre buying these support items until Lich has Tranquil Boots. Tranquil Boots are actually so important on Lich so that he can go from lane to lane, use Denies, be able to spam the Frost Blast without getting into a dangerous position. And it gives him some extra tank ability as well. And it, he really needs it. And it's not like either of these heroes have farm, the Ogre or the Lich, really, at this point. Mitch is coming top with a double damage, or rather it's Milan. They're going to Fire Blast out of Paris as well. Mitch is going to come in. He's going to get Silence. Is he going to fall here? He's low. The right click. Mitch might get his going off the time lock coming in. The Bash Slide. Grazine, Ice Path, Paris wants kills. He wants blood, but he's not going to find anybody. Not just yet. Grazine's still backing away. There's going to be the usage oh. of the Plasma Field, and it's going to be the vision that he needs. Milan comes in with the waveform. He has the double damage room, but he's out of range. Lazard comes in. He uses the Frost Blast. They might get Paris, but there is no waveform in the end. And it's going to be a one for nothing, almost a two for nothing. Bucktop has to pass a bass back rather away from the tower. Wait for me. They might get mad here. He will fall. Waiting Rift Dream Call comes through. They blow up one. Milan gets doomed up as well. This is going to be a huge pickup. If they can get it, Funzie's going to back away from the creep wave. They will not chase further. Still two for one and a tower uh, in the end for denial. And a doom of Milan, which forces him to go back home. I actually just took a look at Paris's skill build on the racer. It's actually pretty interesting. He has 4 2 4, so not a build we typically see. I actually kind of like it this game because both the Lich and the Ogre only have single target spells, so it's going to really hurt these support heroes because they're going to take they're going to take 130 damage every time they want to cast a spell on him and get slowed for 2 seconds. I don't think they'll be able to kill him, especially with his mech. And if he's getting a BKB, which it certainly seems like he is, I don't know if there's any way he dies in the near future. Mitch doesn't have the damage. He doesn't have treads yet. I mean, maybe with Jakiro's damage in a waveform, but... Yeah, it's it's not really going to do anything to these cores, because the only single target from any of these cores is actually the Adaptive Strike. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. But at the same time, these cores aren't... With the exception of the Jakiro, the cores aren't exactly doing damage at this point. <clears throat> yeah, they really aren't. I mean, Fury on uh, Morphling... I mean, Morphling's damage is pretty much entirely waveform at this point. 
Radiance bottom tower Which isn't bad, is all things considered. He does have Yasha, but he's still get, trying to get up towards his next set of items. Draw's gonna blink it, Dream Quan on it too. Waning Rift is gonna go, Buck Top is gonna get silenced up. There's gonna be the usage of that Chronosphere, Mitch. Swap out, Draw should still fall. He sticks up, he stays alive. Mitch is magic, so they've already lost one. They're gonna lose two. Funzi with a double kill. They're chasing after Milan, but Milan actually is chasing after Paris. He's getting kind of low. Wait for him up into the high ground. But the Duke coming in, Milan gets blown the hell up. Three dead. Milan getting a bit too aggressive there, and MYI have to back away. Lazar will just kind of retreat and sadly throw Ice Armor up under the tower as he knows this tower will probably fall inevitably. That is very unfortunate for MYI. I'm not even sure that they can actually play so aggressively onto these towers. You know, they wanted to pressure the tower with the Liquid Fire, but they're up against a team that has the mechanism up and running. They don't have a mech of their own. A big mistake, I think, to take that fight. And the Chrono actually, the Chrono wasn't so good either. It only hit on the Puck, and then the Puck got swapped out, not even getting a kill onto the Chrono target. And Denial come out way ahead from that engagement. They get 10,000 gold lead. They get that nice tower in the mid lane, 7,500 experience advantage. So. Denial having a fantastic early game. Yeah, I think at this point you have to kind of put all your eggs into the Milan. Let's, you know, just rice it up. Yeah, kind you have of to basket. go to the late game now. If you're MYI, you really can't afford to take another fight like that. Especially Doom getting up to 3,000 gold. He's just going to buy an Axe Scepter, man. Like, he's one point booster away from having free reign over all of oh, these Doom heroes. Is very farmed. Radiance yeah. Bottom tower is under Disgusting. Attack. They will catch out somebody mid lane as the Yule's on a draw, and he's going to have his face shift. No, he's going to fall. Big no pickup. That's actually huge coming out, and that's a mega kill streak going for Grazine. Um, and just kind of uh, bad positioning from Draw, it seems like getting caught out there, and that gives a lot of gold away. In fact, 1,000. Dyer's top tower is yep. under attack. Radio and for how rough of a start Funzi had, he's really done quite well in this game. It is really difficult to shut down a Doom entirely because he's always going to have that Devourer, and he actually opts for the Hand of Midas build, so he farms extremely quickly at this point. And. Honestly, no one, if we look at the net worth, I mean, yeah, he's highest in net worth, so. Even outpacing his ally on the Razor. Yeah, it's a really good start for Frenzy. Well, like you mentioned, it was kind of tough it's in the bottom the lane. the whole team. Yeah, they're rolling now. They, they've, yeah. Got the, they've got the team fight going. They've got the items they need. Uh, the Agadims will come out shortly. Uh, he's going to be able to use his Midas in a second, and, well, that'll probably be the end of that. And then, well. I mean, even the supports are starting to get involved. <clears throat> CM, of course, uh, actually has Tranquil's Bracer and a, a Staff of Wizardry, so. Big casual question equals question, question, question mark coming out from Milan. As uh, there is some lag, it seems like, from Denial's side. So, Pause City. We've yep. uh, been without pauses since the two-minute mark, but it looks like we have one again, so. So, if you're MYI, I think your path, you obviously have to start looking towards the late game because I think if they are able to get into a late game situation where somehow Void and Morphling are able to get a lot of items, they have a chance to win. But at the same time, in that late game situation, it's most likely going to be up against a Refresher Aghanim's Doom, which is very scary. So, and I honestly don't even see a situation where Void even comes back into this game. Just having it. Terrible start to this game. He's 0 2 2 with 27 CS at 17 minutes is an offlaner. Radiance he's a walking chronosphere, it's attack. pretty much what he is at this point for the faceless void. And I'm actually really surprised Milan didn't go for the Lincoln Sphere first and foremost. I know he wants to get involved, and he wants to be able to farm fast the greedy build that is the Yasha first, but Radiance bottom tower maybe a Lincoln Sphere. I, I guess the Lincolns wouldn't have been done anyways on this uh, morphling at this point. Meanwhile, speaking of the Doom, they're walking in. They're going to find Milan. Creo is not there. He has the swap. They're not going to go for him. It looks like they're going to try to find Grazine instead. The Yule Scepter is going to go. There's going to be the time walk in, and Creo actually is going to fall. The Magic Missile first, but he's dead. Doom does come in, but that's on an illusion. That actually, that's a replicate. That is maybe the most unfortunate thing I've ever seen. And that's a double Chronosphere. Doom Coil is going to go through. They still will kill one, but here's going to be the Chain Frost coming in. Paris getting low. He's already used the mech, I believe. Yeah, it's already done. Milan's going to try to fight the Freezing Field from Matt. Are they still going to win this without Doom? It looks like they might. 
Milan's gonna get chased down. Jeral has got his illusory orb. There's gonna be that double damage room picked up by Jeral. Well played. Milan getting low as well. He's gotta have his strength more. He has a bit more land mana left in the tank. He's 88. Dead. The TP coming in from Creo. Magic missile and goodbye. Milan four down. They don't even need the doom, damn it. Funz is gonna do it all on his own. And the only hero surviving is the one that honestly doesn't matter. At this point, I, like if Lich dies, it actually is of no consequence right now because they don't even care he's about extremely Lizard. poor. They don't even I mean, care he throws out both of his spells and puts the ice armor on before the fights, and that's his contribution at this Radiance point. That chin frost was just like it, it, it piddled in comparison and to what happened afterwards. Tower. Yeah, denial win that fight without even using doom on anything. They doom the illusion and they still win the fight. A really huge freezing field from. Fucking mad, and I was actually a bit surprised that they didn't use any spells to cancel it. They had the Ice Path, but Radiant's he decides to Ice Path two attack. heroes on Denial, but then the Freezing Field just did tons of damage. This game is steadily getting out of hand, and uh, unless Milan can get some miraculous farm here, which it doesn't seem is the case, this, this is going to be over quick. Yeah. Jiffy, they might get a kill on Funzie if they're not careful. Jarrell comes in. He's going to be a bit aggressive. Dream Coil. The mech's going to keep him alive. Wait for him. He, he just dove too far and, and died for it. Fire Blast. They're, they're still trying to go. Funzie's going to try to back away. He'll try to TP out. Fire Blast. Oh my god. What the ice path coming in. The tip coming through for Grazine. And Morphling gets the dominating spree that was up on Funzie. So Milan does end up getting a bit of that gold as well. And they actually got 2,000 gold out of that exchange, by the way. And that actually gives Void his Midas as well. So that's kind of ridiculous. Oh, Void goes for a Midas? Ultra late game. I mean, this just makes it so they have an even longer period of time where they have to wait before they can fight. I'm not sure about this choice. I mean, there's a reason why we never see Midas on this hero. Even when it's in the safe lane, I think it's very rare that we see Midas coming out for this hero. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's just... Yeah. It, it actually doesn't increase your farming speed on this hero very much, because... On any hero that has a mobility spell, your farm actually... is not increased very much by Midas. It's increased more by having something that does a bit of AoE damage, which is why you go for the Maelstrom. And pre why previously you went for the Battle Fury. And, I mean, the reason why you don't go Battle Fury anymore on Void is because inside the Chrono, Bash does double, so you want to get something with attack speed. And Maelstrom solves both of your problems. It helps you farm and gives you attack speed, so. Yeah. It's been that way for a while as yeah. well. And Denial are going to try to find out a, a couple of MY heroes. MY seem to know better. Uh, as to what's going on, they they see Funzie walking into the jungle. They have that lane ward down bottom, so they have an understanding of where the heroes might be located. However, they're still going to walk mid regardless. Mitch is going to have to time walk away. Well, maybe not. And Creo was coming in, but he only has the one swap at this point. And they could probably just push down mid and maybe force a fight. And hopefully not use Doom on a replicate. Yeah, I'm just concerned that right now MY can't really stand and fight. They... Like, this Faceless Void doesn't really have any staying power in this fight. After the Chronosphere is over, he's probably out of the fight. Morphling can do a little bit of right-click damage, but it's pretty insignificant at this point, so he's pretty much just a waveform and adaptive strike at this point. The only real one that can output a lot of damage is the Jakiro right now, and I think that should be the prime focus for Denial. I actually think Jakiro is the largest threat right now. And we saw it in that previous fight in the bot lane, where they were able to get off two kills. They Yule Sceptered the Doom into all the spells of the Jakiro, and it actually started off a really nice fight for them. So I think if they're able to get, you know, a Puck Silence onto the Jakiro, maybe disrupt him a little bit. Even maybe a Doom, I think, would be okay to be used on the Jakiro, because if they, let's say, Doom the Jakiro and uh, Chrono comes out, there's not going to be really any damage. You know, you might have a Chain Frost... And some ogre spells, but that's about Radiance it. Bottom tower and I was fallen. waiting for Funzie to pick up this item. I was actually just going to talk about it, but he purchases up the blank dagger, sells it. He'll probably buy it from the side shop and then TP into the mid lane if he needs to. Um, there oh, was he a smoke has blink eggs in 22 minutes. I mean, yeah, he had this Midas pretty early, and then he got kills. So after that, it was all downhill from there. And Denial will try to go for Roshan. It looks like they'll be able to do so. They have Wave of Tear at level 3, which Dyer's means some armor reduction coming in. That's probably more than enough for them to get Roshan pretty quickly. It's already falling fast, so 
Aegis as well, maybe on Funzie or Razor, whoever they want to give it to. They've got options. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Uh, and uh, I don't think they can contest this, even though this is probably the best place for them to fight in this choke point. And you know the game is difficult when you can't even contest Roshan with a lineup like MYI have. They're going to try. Also. Juan has invis, Bucktop is going to pop his Fire Blast, then they just take him to death. There's going to be the Doom going into Mitch, and now they definitely can't oh, fight. No. Chain Frost is going to go, it's going to bounce once, and that'll be it. Paris is running after them, he's got the Eye of the Storm. The slow is up on a Grazine. Do they have any way of stopping him? It looks like no, he'll get out in time. Mitch is still doomed up. Is he getting chased down? Is he going to die to this? Yeah, he I will. The Aglet Scepter actually just kills Mitch as Funzie's nearby. And they'll just go back to Roche as if nothing ever happened and take the Rages. So the, the point of contesting seemed to be not a good idea. I also wanted to note that of Creo's skill build on the Vengeful Spirit, recently we've been seeing 144 on bench, especially from teams like Cloud9 and Team Tinker. They've been running the hero a lot recently, actually. Uh, C9 actually have been picking it every game that it's available. The reason being, the Wave of Terror spell is actually so efficient in the jungle for double stacking. You can get off a lot of double stacks, and then you can help your carry kill those stacks with the six, the minus six armor at level seven. So it's actually an insanely useful hero oh to help God, you. God, Milan, wow, did he die quickly. The Droom Coil on Lazard as well, he should go. In just a moment, the right clicks coming out from the puck with the double damage rune just blow him up. Gerald gets a double kill. Bucktop pops a multicast coming out, but that does nothing. Mitch comes in. The Chronosphere, the jaunts away from Gerald. What a play coming out from your puck on Denial's side. And Mitch can't find anything. That Chronosphere is down for 100 seconds. If I was Denial, I push into that tier 2 tower mid immediately. Yeah, they should be able to get it too. Oh, God. Bucktop, what are you doing there, buddy? You're just going to get swapped and you're dead. And the ownage call from the announcer, and it's it's bad, man. It is bad for MYI. Certainly ownage. <laughs> I mean, if we look at the, I mean, if we look at the graphs, I mean, it pretty, pretty much tells the story of this game. Just a steady decline in the favor of denial in both gold and experience. Well, especially gold. Experience, you know, we have that little bit of rubber banding. So they're going to take the last tier 2 tower as well, and this will be uh, the beginning of the end unless MY can find some miraculous fight as I've talked about earlier. I mean, Milan's trying to desperately get to a Mantis style, but that is very far away. Well, not super far, but it seems like an eternity. Funzi's going to farm bottom lane. Um, maybe he'll meet with his team and they'll go for a tower. Um, perhaps mid would be an option. But if they take a 2-3 and a Rax, this game's over. Wow. Okay. Well, oh, that's Puck actually game. might die. Strange. He was sitting there. I wasn't expecting him to be there in that situation and dying. So Bucktop actually gets the kill. He'll be back in uh, 53 seconds. But for now, this gives some time to MY to farm up in this top lane and maybe get things going a bit better for them. As they actually do have Bloodlust coming out, so maybe Mitch isn't going to be... He'll be able to provide some right click now that he has Bulbas helping him out in treads and a Midas, but he'd like his first item a bit quicker. Yeah, and I think if you're in the shoes of MYI, you just say farm farm to the late game and hope. Oh my, he missed that ice pass. Denial makes mistakes. Magic is still coming in. Oh, goodbye, Bucktop. That freezing field is more than enough damage to get the kill. Although, oh, the Doom was Lincoln's. I think Milan actually just picked up the Lincoln. So. Lizard comes in. Milan did pick up the Lincoln. So you're right. They're gonna come in. Chronosphere is gonna go, and Crew is gonna fall to this. Paris is getting low as well. In fact, he doesn't have mana to use his BKB. He already has his intreds up. Milan, there's the BKB going for Paris, and he actually has the Aegis. And Milan's gonna have to replicate away. Blink four. They want this kill. Doom is not up, by the way. Paris really wants Milan to four step forward. Oh my God! The level death just blows him apart. He's wow. Level 15. Yeah, that did some damage. 15 is divisible by 3, boys. It's a map, man. That, that means you're dead. Yeah, that, that means you're dead. That's <laughs> what it means. Macro power coming up. Nice bet as well. Paris coming through. Gerald's going to pop the Dream Call. Good UL Scepter from Grazine to keep himself alive. The Dagon comes in, and they are running over. MYI. And, uh, uh, Doom player confirms stats, man. That's right. Indeed. You have to, you have to know math in order to be able to play Doom. 
Uh, Mad's gonna get multicasted. He's getting low, but Bucktop is gonna fall to the right click. And the phase shift coming in. Mitch is gonna try to find Mad, but he won't be able to do so. The day again on the high ground gets to kill Mazard as I miss it. Mitch is gonna get waiting rifted, and well, Ice Path goes and actually keeps them alive. The next swap out, that'll be on to Grazine. They're gonna match Missile Hill fall, four dead, and at some point you have to wonder how much punishing MYI could take. Yeah, I was actually just going to say, at what point do you just tap out for MYI? Because I think this game is unwinnable at this stage. It, they're just too far behind, and it's not even... I did say MYI might have better late game, but that's assuming that both teams are even close in golds, but that's... this Doom is going to have a... He has a BKB already, and if he picks up a refresher next, he could even have a refresher rate like 32 minutes, and... At that point, you just have no chance. He's going to doom two of your cores, remove them entirely from the fight, maybe even the game. I mean, Void has 1,350 life. Doom is going to do 1,200 damage at level 16. I mean, he's level 16 right now. If he stands next to him for two seconds after dooming, he's dead. Well, and that's the life of a faceless Void that has no farm. And I don't even think there's... I, I think he's actually just dead if he gets doomed because... There's no way he's getting out of the, the Doom range. No. Speaking of getting doomed, luckily and Milan does replicate out in time to notice that, hey, I might actually just die here. So he gets out in time, waveforms and replicates away. Uh, speaking of getting the refresher on the Doom, you're right, he has the Perseverance, so not a strange decision by any stretch of the imagination for Denial, for Funzie. But at this point, I think all they need to do is either wait for the next Roshan or just apply the correct amount of pressure towards the mid lane and finish off that Rax, which is now exposed. Uh, I think we're going to get a desperate smoke gank, and then if this doesn't work, I imagine we might actually just see a GG. Mitch actually is going for an Agonims on Void. I'm just not sure about these Void items because I like Agonims on Void when you have a team uh, team fighting based comp composition and you have a lot of spells that you want to dump into this chrono you know maybe you have an invoker or a, I don't know just anything that you dump into the chrono but they really don't have it sure they have the Jakiro but that's not really a oh. Funz is going to get caught out there he's going to the chrono spear as well Creo and Funz are going to get focused down pops the big game he actually got out of that chrono spear the doom is going to go on a bitch Funz is going to keep trying to fight here Buck top is frost bitten up Creo's getting right click from behind by Milan Paris is going to work now looking back to the Milan here, there's the Lincoln Sphere going, the level death was doing the job there, he'll try to TP away. Frostbite's gonna go, the Dream Coil as well, Milan waveforms up into the high ground. Illusorev will jump back in, waiting with Dagon, gets the kill, both cores with the exception of Jakiro, dead for MYI. And Denial coming out ahead yet again. Uh, was Doom not in the chrono? I'm kidding. I don't know what I don't know what was. happened. Uh, you should not ask me about he, that. I don't think he was in chrono. I it, guess it not. He got ice like path and bash. I think he was I, out, ice path and then bash. Yes. It kind of looked like he was inside, but there's no way you can. The only way you can get out of chrono that I know of is if you're like is uh, I've seen it a couple times. You're on a place on the map where you actually can't be with, let's say, Spectre because you've daggered. Let's say you're in trees with Spectre and it ends. It actually forces you to the other side of the trees, so it'll actually force you out of Chrono. But that's the only mechanic I know of that you can get out of Chrono, besides something like a, a swap, of course. Right. I don't think... I know you definitely can't force, for one. Obviously, that'd be rigged. Uh... <laughs> I think you could a long time ago, but the, at that point, nice frog was like, was hmm, I terrible. should probably just change this and actually make places void <laughs> viable, huh? You could also force stuff out of black hole and stuff too. It's actually funny. Remember in Dota One when you could use items while being black hole if you just spammed them enough? That was uh, fun times. Those were the days. Those were the days. It's a long time ago. You're talking about here at least. It's <laughs> like what? All right, that's a couple. Got to talk back. about something. No. Four staff, not as good of an item anymore, but still pretty solid. MY is Mitch, like he talked about, going for the Agonim Scepter, Orca Club, and Blade of Alacrity. Point pushes. He's almost got his Ags, I guess. And they're 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 sticking to it, man. Uh, Mot packs. Unfortunately, I can't see those stats. I can't see that either. Yeah, they're, they're cut off on the side over here, my friend. I don't know why that that range is so big. That 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 gap. Hmm, interesting. Okay, it says twenty one. I think. <laughs> I think it's. <laughs> 
The rough life of the Sats man, Mop Packs. How unfortunate. Creo's gonna get caught up by Mitch. They're gonna fire blast him. The multi cast, the triple times. Creo's gonna get right click down and he's just from back and forth. But they're gonna use the waiting rift, the Dream Quo as well. But here comes the uh, freezing field. And actually, the Chronosphere is used just defensively and Paris is caught. Draw's gonna get multi cast and he might get brought down as well. Paris with the BKB. Draw's getting low. Buck Top is gonna fall too. Dead three dead. In fact, as Mad blinks down, he uses his frostbite as well as Crystal Nova to nuke down Mitch. And they're taking the fight to denial, but they are not winning any single trade. They're getting like Creo, and that's it in almost every single fight. It seems like. So. And after you kill him, you actually end up losing damage in yeah. the process. So. It's really not beneficial. Uh, just such a rough game, and actually. An Ethblade, it looks like, yeah. is going to be the choice yeah. for Jarrell. Because why not, man? Why not have an yeah, Ethereal Blade up on? Why way. not be able to one-shot everyone in the game except for the course? I think it'll one-shot both these supports. Actually, Ogre does have 1600 life because he has two Bracers and an Urn. It's actually insane. Bracer Gaming and Ogre Gaming, I suppose. The next stage is going to get picked up by Paris. He does have the Refresh Orb now out. Funzi is not too far off from his. The Agonim Scepter finally completed for the Faces Void, but again, if you're if you're denial at this point, now that you have the Aegis, you you have no qualms about pushing down mid and trying to get the set of racks here, which is something that they've been kind of struggling to do because of the fact that MY have been outside of the base and been so active. Uh, but I imagine denial are going to try to put a stop to that, and Lizard actually is maybe dead. Yeah, he's he's going to take like four right clicks and just die. Yep. That is a scary razor. He's a oh, he has man. a refresher as well. Yeah, he's, he's ready to fight, man. Good split push, though, coming up from Grazine. And so they finally decide to split push instead of taking the fight to Denial. Definitely not living up to their name of my insanity. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Well, listen, they, uh, they wanted to be involved early. That's fine. They want to fight. I'm not going to complain about that. I think that joke just flew right over your head. It really did. I actually have no idea where you're going with that. <laughs> the definition of insanity is doing the same. Oh, thing you know what? Listen, I got it now. Yeah. Thanks for explaining yeah, that one it. to me. They're going to blow Buck Top real quick. The Doom is up onto an illusion again. Uh, uh, the Ethereal Blade. Milan replicates into it because why not? Mitch is going to go to town at Dural. Right clicking him down. Dural is getting low. He might fall. The Agatha can't even kill him. He face shifts the Magra Power. He'll be able to get away in a second. He might die. He will, but he does get the Dream Cool off. The Freezing Field denials Paris. Just get Getting so many kills with this eye of the storm, the refresh was zapping away at everything. The seizure warning not included. Close your eyes, kids. It's disgusting. Denial getting their first set of racks. They're gonna head to the mid lane probably and look to finish this game off as the only one alive is Milan. And again, they don't even need Doom. Funzi just seems an illusion. He's like, I don't even care at this point. They're gonna take the game regardless. Milan's gonna jump in and in the process die. Oh, maybe not. Good replicate. He stays alive. No, I was wrong. He can now watch his base Radiant's fall <laughs> from the base <laughs> instead of the grave. Kill those effigies, damn it. We have the Grazine ZZZ building. Uh, so what effigies do we have? Oh, a nice Shadow Fiend, actually. Yeah, there's the Shadow Fiend one. You didn't see Grazine's Legion Commander, I don't think. How come Shadow Fiend is in a stone? I don't know. That's. Maybe it's Arcana? Who knows? That's not what the Arcana looks like, though. Regardless, <laughs> we did it, man. We got through game number one. We did it. What a grueling game this was. I mean, this game was actually over at 15 minutes. I, and I would say at 15 minutes, the chance for MYI to come back was less than 1%. That's how one-sided this game was. And I think I attribute a lot of it to this last pick, Faces Void. It honestly did absolutely nothing in this game. I really don't like Void with Morphling at all. I like Void with the other heroes. I think Void is really good with Lich. You got the Chain Frost with the Chrono. I think it's good with Chikiro and Ogre has some spells he can dump into the Chronosphere. But, you know, Morphling is a really short-ranged carry. A lot of his early game damage comes from the waveform. And I just don't like these heroes together. And every time I see it, I always wonder why teams are picking these together. And it never seems to work out how they want it. Unless they snowball, of course. Well, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. For my insanity, it didn't work out this time. So they'll go down to 6-5. and five, Denial with a, a pretty big win, I'd got to say. Um, like you said, they were the favorites. We will see game number two coming up in just a second, guys. So make sure you stick around here for Dota Pit. Uh, again, my name is Mott. With me is F4L. And, of course, our stats man, as always, is Mott Pax. Make sure you guys follow us on Twitter. At F4L Dota, at Mott Dota, and at Mott Pax as well. 
Uh, if you've enjoyed the Quantic Cast, leave us some comments and criticisms, concerns, shout outs in chat. Uh, make sure you guys check out DotaPit.com as well. Shout out to our sponsors, Twitch, AMD, Sapphire, Tessero, and Sennheiser. God, I can never remember them all in a timely fashion. We'll take a quick break. We'll come into game number two in just a second, guys. Stick around. Thank <laughs> you. 